My name's Sean Harrison, I'm the master distiller for Plymouth Gin. I like to see other people drink the gin and enjoy the gin. The nice thing about the barman making cocktails and drinks and choosing, particularly choosing your brand because they think it works best in that particular cocktail. My absolute most important thing is that I pass on to the next generation about how to make it. And because it's not my gin, I am looking after somebody else's recipe, but also it is quite nice to have that sort of 200 odd years behind you, knowing that the skills have been passed down and along. And even now, you know, that the, the other two people here in production, we're always talking and checking and making sure that we're consistent with the approach of what we're doing. Having a, a strong and old heritage is both a godsend and a curse. You know, it's a godsend because we have so much history that we can pick or choose the stories we want to, to tell people about. But the curse is we've got so many stories to pick and choose. So it's trying to find the right one for the right time. Because the one thing you always have to be is relevant to the here and now. That's the only way you keep going. And it does go through everything that we do because you could pick up a bottle of Plymouth Gin and the fact that we have a Black Friar on there, we have the Mayflower on there. The label that it's based on was first trademarked in 1882. The, the shape of the bottle, the colour of the bottle, they're all the clues really about the heritage of the brand. But the, the thing is to make them modern and I think you know, the bottle is a, is a good example of you can achieve that. But we still can never really get away from the fact that we are a gin from 1793. When you're working with a still, it's, yes, it's a, a lump of copper with, a, with a, a heat source in it, but it does weird and wacky things depending on the weather, depending on the day of the week, depending whether it got out of bed the wrong way. There's a recipe here that's 200 years old and we're trying to make exactly the same every day in, day out. So there's that sort of challenge. And then there's the challenge really of buying the ingredients, of, of making sure that the ingredients that we buy still keep making the gin as we expect it to be made. You would think that after 20 years of seeing gin's resurgence and seeing all the marketing activity that the gin industry has been through over that time, that people would know about how gin is made and the basic idea of what gin is. Not so much. It's amazing how many people come into this distillery and are amazed that this is how you actually make gin. That's both really nice because actually you're able to tell them, you know, your story. But it does surprise me that, you know, that people don't know. This building was not designed. This building just evolved. It's actually uh, three very distinct strips of land that go from one street to the other. They just almost bought a strip of land and put a building on it and then fitted whatever they had into that space. And again, because we're a listed building, we can't do too much. We can't knock any walls down or anything else like that. We can go through them with permission. So we've always got to try and find a creative solution to get from A to B. My perfect gin and tonic is called a martini. Five o'clock in the afternoon, if it's a lovely hot day, gin and tonic is easily one of the most refreshing drinks you can have. So that's a good starting point. I always think it needs to be tall glass or highball, not a rocks glass. You need big lumps of ice, as, as solid as you can get, not lollipop. And you need everything cold and a good measure, good ratio between the gin and the tonic. Next five years, I think, for Plymouth are going to be really exciting. We've got double digit growth. That means we're going to run out of capacity, so we need another still. And I think the gin world is still new enough, if you like, into this sort of comeback that there are some interesting products that are going to arrive. And I think my own personal one is fruit cups. I think, you know, they're a much maligned product and I think it would be a nice way to go.